almost all of the debunk materials on UFO and UAP and their quote, rational explanations are truly remarkable, for the reason that there is practically nothing new in them for more than 70 years. Weather balloons, airplanes, Venus above the horizon, and other atmospheric phenomena. Most of the academia invent any nonsense for the natural interpretation of extremely unusual things in the sky. But the most important thing, though, is never ever mention the acute and nervous interest of the military and secret intelligence services in all such phenomena. The phenomenon that is clearly the best candidate for an advanced non-human civilization and that demonstrates godlike possibilities. But before asserting anything, it makes sense to quote the point of view of scientists. Those who are seriously investigating the technological aspects of the UAP phenomenon. The Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies is a small group of scientists whose members are actively studying the phenomenon using a scientific approach. One of their special guests was Dr. Hal Putoff, physicist that is involved in many U.S. Army projects, including the Black Budget Programs that were directly involved in scientific studies of UAP phenomenon in the U.S. Army. He was discussing what from reported anomalous observations of UAP phenomenon can be addressed on the basis of known physics. Things like interstellar travel, if any, and so on. A wormhole is not in principle ruled out. And I'm talking science fiction here. I mean, this is academic textbook stuff that general relativity uh, people investigate all the time. So that could handle the issue of, well, they're so far away, how could they ever get here? Dr. Putoff was a member of one of the scientific groups at SRI that helped to develop the methodology of the U.S. Army Stargate project. In one of the declassified transcripts of the remote viewing session, described an event that very much resembles a wormhole formation. It was noted that at the unknown facility, the event made a very strange light effect, an iridescent outline of some kind. The unknown source described it, quote, this apparition thing was a light. This was an altering of reality. This was like a whole different energy format, like a hole drilled through nothing. He also stated that this event was caused by something that popped into our reality. The resemblance with some kind of open portal or wormhole intensifies by further statement. Quote, Connected tissue of reality. There's twisted around in a corkscrew-like fashion from a hole, and it makes for a very strange light effect. Remote viewer described it like a whole different energy format from somewhere else. The further similarity with open wormhole portal effects through the space-time fabrics continues by the notion that it had to do with time or something, like the connective tissue of reality was twisted in some way, pulled apart. Interestingly enough, another source that worked on this light apparition mentioned an object that looked to him like a flying saucer and was connected to this event. Apart from the distinctive sketch of that object indeed looking like a flying saucer, such UFO objects are often reported as glowing or emitting very bright light. Dr. Putoff proposed his explanation of such a glow as partly caused by the blue shift effect. I mean, in the rooms where you're sitting right now, you don't see most of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's in the infrared, it's in the heat spectrum. What we see with our eyes uh, in the visible is a relatively small part of the EM spectrum. But under the conditions in which space-time metric has been engineered to produce the kind of effects you might expect to see in a UAP, you get blue shift, which means, first of all, some of that infrared is going to be upshifted into the visible part of the spectrum. And so you'd expect craft to be actually quite bright, which is one of the things that in fact is reported. If this model is correct, then theoretically we can even imagine how our world would look from the inside of such a craft. Inside the craft, everything is working relatively normally. It's just that when they look out, they see the rest of the world in redshifted and moving in slow motion. So at least in terms of detecting their environment, uh, it's, it's pretty reasonable, uh, you know, what, what they would be able to see. But 
On the other hand, there's a kind of a simple side of it, and that is the people inside the craft, if there are people in the craft, uh, to them, things are very, very normal. Uh, <clears throat> so even though from the outside we say, oh, you know, why aren't they fried by the blue shifted uh, radiation and so on? Well, it's that under this model, uh, all their atomic structure and chemical elements are also all blue shifted. So relatively speaking, to them, they're in a kind of a normal space. And of course, with this blue shift effect, there is a prediction of UAP near-field exposure injuries. For example, the visible can be blue shifted up into the UV and you get sunburn injury, often reported by people who encountered a powerful craft in close proximity. Or if you get too close, some visible spectrum that is not harmful can be shifted up to soft X-ray radiation and you get radiation injury. And so it was circa 2011 or so uh, when some people from the CIA uh, and an aerospace company came to me uh, to ask me for their help uh, on the analysis of some individuals who had been, had encountered some anomalous objects, they said. And I mean, they came to my office unannounced uh, and then started laying out pictures and data on the table in front of me. I said, I mean, first I thought it was a joke. I mean, I really thought that I was being somebody was about to put me on candid camera and make a joke of it. Uh, but as they started showing me the data and they were deadly serious about it because they had basically said at that point, people have died. They were military personnel, uh, people, intelligence agents uh, on the ground, uh, a pilot, uh, a few pilots actually, um, who had gotten close enough and they had some sort of effects. Uh, objects on the ground that were, you know, glowing or, you know, moving too fast or they were there and they got too close to it and then it just disappeared. And then afterwards they get these, they get these radiation burns. Very often some of them have been uh, basically on the skin, you see this a sclerosis of the skin, reddening inflammation of the skin. So some sort of electromagnetic radiation, we imagine, uh, but then it goes deep enough into some of their bodies, if they got too close, that would cause lasting scarring within the body, which is not something you ever want to have. If you go back into the historical records, things written by the scientists and philosophers and mayors and kings of the day, you know, it's, it's in the record. Uh, this object was seen, it looked like a wheel or it looked like a shield and it showed up over our battles and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, you can go back and recontext the observations and say, well, as, if somebody wrote that today, I'd call it a UFO or a UAP. As for the ancient historical references, the same blue shift effect might be observed by the Egyptian pharaoh who described a miracle during the battle with Nubians when the quote star, as he described it, flew in very close proximity over the heads of the Nubian army, literally burning them alive and spreading panic between warriors. Dr. Nolan mentions another group of specific damages to the brain he researched that occurred during the close encounter with UAP phenomenon. It's interesting that as was previously theorized by scientists Victor Inushin and Vladimir Sedlak, our bodies naturally possess cold plasma, which as they believe, mostly localized in our brain and spinal cord. Such bioplasma can provide a natural interface for psychic phenomena often induced by UAP that at the moment is widely perceived as parapsychological otherwise. And it can be also responsible for brain damage of some observers after close encounters with UAP phenomenon. And the brain injuries were interesting because one of the things that we noticed in these individuals, and this is sort of a side study which I'm working on with a group at Harvard, uh, is we noticed that an area of the brain, the caudate putamen, in many of these individuals was overdeveloped. Uh, and uh, that's a whole other story, but it basically we figured out that this is an area where intuition happens, and a lot of these individuals who we had were, it's called them, high functioning. You know, you, you don't get to be a pilot of an expensive right. craft without being reasonably smart and having intuition. Uh, and so um, just a side benefit of studying this allowed us to find a, come up with a medical 
uh, understanding of where cognition is happening in the brain, and we're following up with that in a mainstream science way with a neurophysiology group at Harvard. And we've validated the original findings. But that was sort of a, it's sort of an example of because we paid attention to anomalous data, we found an, a, an anomaly that really had nothing to do with the injury in the first place, but it told us something about what makes people intuitive and smart.